Hey guys, I'm sad we didn't get to spend the rest of the year together, although we are lucky we did finish teaching all of our curriculum for Teacher Academy 1 before we got out in the nick of time. I'm going to go over a few things you can do this summer to help you be ready for the fall. One major thing that um, we work on is learning how to appreciate diverse learners. And that's one of our big units. We spend a lot of time on that because there are so many different abled kids in our world today. And we have to learn how to handle that, how to work with them, how to get them to succeed and possibly you know, put yourself in their shoes so that you know how to respond if you were to have a student like this. So since you guys love to veg out and sit on the couch, bum out, I have gathered a list of, I calculated out about 36 hours of vegetation time for you with different movies that show different abled students. So I'd like you to try to watch some of these and look at the different situations that these kids are in. Look at their families, look at how they have to solve problems, how they have to solve not just learning problems, but also how they have to solve their daily problems. You need to look at it in the perspective of you, if you were their teacher or if you were the student and you want to put yourself in their shoes so that you can try to think of the best possible environment that you could give them at school, especially when they have lots of other obstacles to overcome. All right, so are you ready for the list? Because here we go. All right, guys, here's your list of movies for over the summer. First things first, Wonder. Next, Temple Grandin. Another one, I Am Sam. The Miracle Worker. Rudy. The Secret Garden. The Blind Side. Forrest Gump, The Boy Who Could Fly. All of these movies have people with different situations that you can look at and things that you could notate. And I want you to pay attention to all the characters that we talked about. Maybe take some notes, really think about how each person is different and how their life is in a classroom, not, maybe not in a classroom. Really look at the teacher. Look at those inspirational qualities that they have. Or in some of these cases that they don't have. And really make note of how you want to be and how you want to inspire others. All right, next page of movies, The Cure, Searching for Bobby Fisher, Mr. Holland's Opus, uh, Little Man Tate. And some of these are older guys. I understand that. Um, Simon Birch, you're going to fall in love with that cutie little fellow that plays that part, Radio. Front of the class, a smile as big as the moon, and Rain Man. I know that's old too. Several of these are old. Several of these are new. And there's a lot of new movies out that you guys have seen that have a lot of um, and see what you can learn about those different able students and about the teachers that are involved. Are they inspirational or are they? Maybe they are not teachers that inspire students, or maybe they are people that don't respect others. And what we want to do is change that and glean from each of these movies the ideas where we as teachers can be inspirational and help people to achieve to their utmost ability. That's your goal. So I just put on here books to read while you're lounging on the beach. You may not like to lounge on the beach. You might be at the pool. You might be on your couch. But it's a great time to read some books. So even if you're one of those that likes to read them on your Kindle or your phone, a lot of these are free. You can find them on YouTube, and there are plenty more. These are just a few that I listed that you might want to read for the summer. So a couple of them are kid books. A couple of them are not. Uh, thank you. Falker. This is about a teacher and a student. And obviously when you see thank you, you want you think about um, that this person is thanking this teacher. 
So I want you to go back through and look at it and see what inspirational things happened in this book and the frustration. If you look at the cover, wow, don't you see the frustration on the face? Um, the book Wonder is different than the movie, uh, but the book is an easy read. It's a great read, and I really think you'll enjoy it. Mr. Peabody's Apples is written by Madonna. Mr. Peabody's Apples is one of my favorite stories of all time. I'm not going to give it away, but just to say that it is very true what happens in that story, and, it, and it's a kid's book for uh, all time. Every person needs to read that story and realize that we have an effect on so many people that we don't, under, we don't even know about. So I want you to read that one. I know it's on YouTube also. Um, no Such Thing As Can't. You guys, I know you remember we had uh, Dr. Tyler Sexton come. This is his second book. He's so amazing. I was so personally inspired by him when he came and spoke to us. I just can't get enough of anything he's got to read because he, if you think you can't do anything, if you think you can't succeed at something, you need to read his words because he has overcome so many things and he is so successful and he is kind and hardworking and just an incredible person. So those two little books, God Bless the Little Legs, you guys, he had that book this year when he came and spoke, but this is the new book. So I know you're gonna want it. All right, so the Temple Grandin, the movie about Temple Grandin, this is a book about her with her autistic brain and how she overcame those things. It is so interesting. The library has also ordered a couple of books for us on her for next year, um, but she has several. So this is just an example of one, but there are a bunch of things. All right, you guys know we focus on Ron Clark. This is more of the story behind the essential 55 things that we started to talk about. We haven't spent every waking day on it like we will spend more time in year two. Uh, and another book that he has written is Move Your Bus. And that is an, an approach to success in classroom, but not just in the classroom, in your life. And I really want you guys to begin to think about how you could be successful in life, period. My goal for you in Teacher Academy is not only to be an awesome teacher, but I want you to be an awesome person. A person that cares about kids, cares about others, and inspires people to be the best they can be. That's my ultimate goal for you. So I think these books are just a few that would inspire you. They're things that you can get on YouTube, Amazon, um, and from the local library. So this is your next uh, challenge for those days that you just want to vegetate and sit. So you don't have to be active and move around, but you can be reading and thinking. All right, guys. So one other big part of education, especially in elementary, which a lot of you are going into, um, is reading a book. And that sounds dumb because you're thinking, oh, yeah, everybody can read a book. Well, it is very important to read the book with vocal intonation and also, you've got to learn how to read a book where you can stop and get kids to think about it. Because the biggest problem in, that kids have in elementary school with reading books is processing what's happening and comprehending it. So our goal is to be able to read a book where we guide students to understand what's happening in this book all along. So this is a big book. I like this book because it has a lot of imagination, a lot of places for imagination and, and for you to drag it out of everybody. I know everybody's not going into elementary school and that is fine, but you are going to get more practice next year in writing lesson plans that will involve books. And we will be extracting pieces of books and connecting them with other parts of the curriculum, like science, math, other parts of language, history, etc. So we're going to learn a little bit more about how the books that we read make a connection with everything else that the kids have to learn. And that's the whole goal. We want things to be connected so that it makes sense to them and they can understand it. Because we know when we do not have the right prior knowledge, we don't understand stuff, okay? We've been over that this year. 
So I'm going to read, it looked like spilt milk. It's, it looks like spilt milk. And it's by Charles Shaw. So I already opened it up. But what should I do? Here's the title. Look like spilt milk by Charles Shaw. How could I get kids involved in this? Don't just move on and go, oh, here we go. No, I want to look at it and go, man, what's on the cover of this book? Why, I wonder, is this book blue and white and there's no other colors? Does this really look like spilt milk? Does your milk spill this way? Have you ever spilt milk? And you want to ask some questions to get them excited and interested in this book so that they want to pay attention. Remember, these kids are playing video games and they don't really love to always pay attention. So I want them to be excited about what we're about to read. So I would ask a few questions like that. So it looked like spilt milk. Man, you think that looks like spilt milk? I don't think so. When I spill milk, it's not that perfect. What do we think that is? What's this? Have you ever spilt milk? Do you see how I want to get them involved and going? All right. So I would turn my page, and that's the cover and the title page. And when they're really, really young, like the kids we've worked at with at Head Start, you've got to teach them all these things because they don't just wake up knowing that that's the cover of the book and that this is a title page and that this is an author. We have to teach them and teach them to look for it. Sometimes it looked like spilt milk, but it wasn't spilt milk. Hmm, what do we think here? Now, if this is me, I'm thinking this does look like spilt milk, but what do they mean? Sometimes it looked like spilt milk, but it wasn't spilt milk. Well, this looks like spilt milk to me, but they said it wasn't. I wonder what else it could be. Now, why would I ask that kind of question? I want the kids to kind of think about and use their imaginations. Well, what else could this be? What are the possibilities? And remember, we try not to limit. We try to get everybody to think, and we want to encourage them to think and come up with their own ideas. We want to encourage them to visualize and to see this happening. Sometimes it looked like a rabbit, but it wasn't a rabbit. Okay, well, this looks like a rabbit, right? But do you think it is really a rabbit? But what's not a rabbit? What are they talking about here? Do you have an idea yet? What are you thinking? Has anybody got a clue? You see how you want to stop and make sure you're trying to give them context, take these context clues and have them figure out for themselves what's really going on here. Or are we really talking about milk? Or what else could we be talking about? Sometimes it looked like a bird, but it wasn't a bird. You also notice in this book that it has repetitive language and a repetitive pattern. I would definitely want to use this book with younger kids because of the repetitive patterns. Repetitive patterns, as we know by research, teaches kids how to uh, understand words, sentence structure, and it helps them read because they can know from memory what each word is, and then as we point to it and we read it over and over, they will eventually associate by vi visual uh, cues and auditory cues that this word is sometimes. So the next time I see it, even though it's a really big word for me, I'm gonna know that sometimes because I know what it looks like and I've read it over and over and over. That's more of the principle of, remember we talked about the readers, Dick and Jane. That's a principle of a Dick and Jane reader. So this is the same way. All right. Sometimes it looked like a tree, but it wasn't a tree. Do you have a clue yet what it is? Are you figuring out that it's clouds? Do you have that clue yet? Sometimes you'll have kids that'll already know. Sometimes you'll have kids that won't, but you wanna help them get out there and think, hmm, when have I seen things and imagine things that look like something else. Where was I? Was I inside? Was I outside? Was I looking at something on the phone? What was I doing? Give them some clues to get there. Sometimes it looked like an ice cream cone, but it wasn't an ice cream cone. That really does look like a good ice cream cone. It's being that it's summer, 
We're gonna all want some ice cream, aren't we? Sometimes it looked like a flower, but it wasn't a flower. Again, your repetitive pattern. This looks like a few flowers I have in my yard. Sometimes it looked like a pig, but it wasn't a pig. Now, you know, you guys, that the kids around here are going to know what a pig looks like because most of them have some. And they're going to want to tell you stories about their pig and their pet pig. Kind of want to hold them off just a little bit till you finish the book. And then you can let them do a, a group uh, fake pair share and they can talk about the different things in the book that are related to their lives. And you want them to do that because it'll help them remember the story. Sometimes it looked like a birthday cake, but it wasn't a birthday cake. And you know they're gonna have birthday stories. Sometimes it looked like a sheep, but it wasn't a sheep. And they'll have stories about that too. Young children have stories about everything. Sometimes, sometimes it looked like a great horned owl but it wasn't a great horned owl. And a lot of kids may not have experiences with a great horned owl, so you definitely want to later share with them some other pictures of what a great horned owl looks like because they may or may not have the prior knowledge to understand that. Sometimes it looked like a mitten, but it wasn't a mitten. Now, down here in the heart of Mississippi, we're not gonna have a whole lot of experience with mittens. We rarely ever get snow, and we rarely ever have enough cold weather to even use a mitten. So you might have to go over that too in case they don't have experience with that. Want to jog their memory. Sometimes it looked like a squirrel, but it wasn't a squirrel. Now, if you've got a room full of boys, they're going to all know about those squirrels because they like to go squirrel hunting with their daddies or their grandpas, and they can tell you all about them, even those white albino squirrels. Oh, my book's falling you Sometimes it looked like an angel, but it wasn't an angel. That's really pretty. And sometimes it looked like spilt milk, but it wasn't spilt milk. It was just a cloud in the sky. Now, how many of you guys figured out it was a cloud before the end of the story? Now, obviously, the teacher doesn't want to tell, but you definitely want to find out who really had that clue before we came to the end. Now, when we're looking at this book and we're looking at some other things that we can use this book for, you notice it is in sequential order, that it could be easily adapted to sequential order. You could have kids think about what happened first. What, what did we see the bird first or did they see the um ice cream cone first. The other thing that we will be looking at and making lesson plans with is we could incorporate science in here. Obviously, how could we incorporate science? And clouds, you're right. We can use the study of clouds, but you definitely wanna make sure that whatever you're incorporating into the books is related to subject areas that they are involved in. And we'll get uh, more into that this year. Anytime you have a chance to read a book to a kid this summer, do it. You'll get better and you won't be as afraid. All right, guys, I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i missed you and I'm excited and I cannot wait for year two. I've got some exciting things going for us and planned and I know that after a great summer and this extended time off that you'll be ready to get back and we will be ready to launch into year two, into our journey um, getting you ready to be the great teachers you're going to be. Bye.